It's Graham here, Living the Dream in December 2023, and this, guys, is probably going to be my last video of the year. If you've been following the channel, this year Fiona and I have been to Lanzarote twice with Jet 2, and once to Cyprus, of course, the series that just finished last week. In the past, we've also used TUI when we went to Mexico, and we used Jet 2 about five years ago when Fiona and I went down to Tenerife for 10 days. And of course, TUI and Jet 2 are probably the UK's largest, two largest, tour operators offering packaged holidays, including their own flights and accommodation. The question is, guys, which is better, Jet2 or Tui? So my plan, guys, is to make a cup of coffee first, then take you up to my home office and take you through six points that will decide which is better, Jet2 or Tui. Of course, in our opinion. Hi, I'm Graham, and this is my wife Fiona, and we have always had a work hard, play hard philosophy. From London to New York, and of course the Caribbean, we live our dream through travel. And of course, the odd cocktail. And here on YouTube, we create our memories while living our dream. So come and join us as we share our memories with you. As I said in the introduction to this episode, guys, this TUI versus Jet 2 comparison is just in our opinion. Your experiences may differ, and of course it may differ depending on the airport that you depart and arrive at. But at the end of the day, guys, Fiona and I tend to leave from Glasgow uh, to our destination and back again, and that is what we're basing our experience on of both Jet 2 and TUI. I'm going to score both airlines out of six, starting with their booking, their pre-flight experience, their check-in experience, the boarding, the onboard experience, of course, and finally the seat comfort. So let's get started and talk about booking. You can book both TUI and Jet2 online at their respective websites. You can also book them at a travel agent, and in fact, TUI have got plenty of their own travel agents all over the country. And in fact, I think Fiona booked our trip down to Cyprus at one of the TUI stores in the town where she works. So with nothing to separate Jet2 and TUI when it comes to actually booking your holiday, I decided to have a quick look online. I decided to book a four-day trip down to Lanzarote, back to the Picoa Paya that Viona and I visited back in February this year. Uh, so again, looking at flying out on Saturday and back on a Tuesday, it's only a two day um, half term in February here in Scotland. So booking out on the Saturday and back on the Tuesday night, uh, Jet 2 was absolutely no problem at all, but TUI failed completely. They only fly to um, Lanzarote on a Wednesday during the winter from Glasgow. So for the West of Scotland school holidays, which includes Glasgow, there's absolutely no ability for you to fly down to Lanzarote on TUI. So in that respect, Jet 2 wins it on the booking category. When it comes to your pre-flight experience, I'm also going to give this one to Jet2. And it's very simple, guys. The TUI website is absolutely crap when it comes to your pre-flight experience. The first thing you can't do with TUI until two days before you fly is get your boarding passes. That means you've also got to do a check-in and get your boarding passes while you're on holiday coming back. Jet2 is like Ryanair and EasyJet. Uh, you can simply check in and print off your boarding passes, either in electronic format or in paper format, weeks and weeks before you go. So there's absolutely no problem there with Jet2 when it comes to doing your boarding passes. The other thing that you can't do with TUI is pre-book meals or drinks on board before you travel. And it's something you definitely can do on Jet2, which is something you can also do on EasyJet and Ryanair, as I mentioned plenty of times during the video. One of the things that TUI did try to offer pre-flight was the ability to order a bottle of champagne and a box of chocolates for our flight down to Pathos. 
I thought, why the hell not? I would try it. Went onto the app and every time I clicked on order, the whole entire app went white. It collapsed and it didn't work. Quite frankly, guys, the TUI pre-flight experience is awful. It needs a complete revamp and that's why I'm giving this category to Jet2. Right guys, let's talk about check-in because the first thing that I want to say here in Glasgow, our local airport, Jet2 operate their own little mini terminal. As I've said before, it is in the prefabricated building next to the main terminal in Glasgow, but it doesn't matter if we traveled back in February during quieter times or during the peak summer season, the service that Jet2 offer at this little mini prefabricated terminal has always been absolutely excellent. There are plenty of staff on hand to help you, get you checked in, get you on the way into the terminal and through security. Jet2 have also got plenty of check-in kiosks so you can do self-check-in, print your uh, baggage label and then just simply do a bag drop at the conveyor belt. Their service at Glasgow is absolutely superb and you cannot fault Jet2 uh, on their check-in process, certainly at Glasgow anyway. At Glasgow, TUI just operate from the main terminal. As you saw from our recent video down to Cyprus, uh, their check-in process was, was all right. Made one person, it was no better, no worse than British Airways. Uh, I think we were just lucky. Uh, we were probably one of the very few TUI flights from Glasgow that day. And uh, the check-in went, well, it, it went fine. And we really can't complain. The same can't be said for TUI uh, when traveling back to the UK. Um, there simply weren't enough staff and they were extremely slow and inefficient when we were checking in for a flight from Pathos back to Glasgow. But if you look at this footage from Lanzarote Airport back in February, which is still not peak season, you can clearly see that the TUI check-in lines are just out of this world and terrible. The one thing you do have to remember is that TUI operate not just here in the UK, but they've got a Dutch subsidiary, a Scandinavian subsidiary, and of course they've got their German subsidiary. So they've got tons and tons of flights always heading back to the respective countries. And the check-in uh, at Lanzarote just looked scarily bad. And as for this reason, guys, I'm giving the hat trick and three in a row so far to Jet2, because it doesn't matter if you're checking in at Glasgow, or as you can see here at Lanzarote in both February and in August this year. The check-in experience at Lanzarote from Jet2 was absolutely excellent. There's no complaints, plenty of staff again, and a really good service at check-in from Jet2. So well done to Jet2 for their fantastic check-in experience. Boarding the aircraft, I'm going to be a little bit controversial because both Jet2 and TUI operate exactly the same boarding procedure. And that's back to front. That means if you're back of the aircraft, you get to board first. And if you're at the front of the aircraft, you get to board last. There's nothing wrong with that system. It is fairly efficient. But as I say, I'm going to be a little bit controversial because I'm going to give this one to TUI. The reason for this is pretty simple. When you pre-book your seat with Jet2, you can pay extra to sit near the front of the aircraft. That's pretty normal with any airline. Ryanair and EasyJet do exactly the same. And you also get a higher boarding group number. So if you're sitting at the front of the plane, like Fiona and I have been on all of the flights we've taken down to Lanzarote this year, we were in boarding group one. And if you're in boarding group one with pretty well any airline in the world, you get to board first, not with Jet2 guys. If you're in boarding group one, you board last. As a result, I think this boarding group numbering system that Jet2 have is just disingenuous and it sets a false expectation, guys. The TUI boarding passes clearly just say economy for all passengers and they have their system, you know, uh, those needing extra time with children, etc. under five, I think it is, board first. Uh, followed by those at the back of the aircraft working their way forward in boarding groups. And as I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're in boarding group one and it says boarding group one on your, on your boarding pass, I do expect to board first and not last. So really, I think while it's not a bad system, Jet2 just need to get real and start setting proper 
expectations. And if you're sitting at the front of the plane, maybe you should be on the last boarding group or just do what Tui do and operate a, a, a boarding group system uh, by economy only. So that for that reason, Tui are finally off to the races with one point. In our experience of flying on both Tui and Jet 2, I think it's fair to say they both offer a fairly consistent service. The cabin crew on all of our flights were extremely professional. They were happy to be at work and they did offer a very good standard of service. I've already talked about the ability in Jet 2 to pre-order your meal deals, but we're talking about the in-flight service itself here, guys, and both airlines offer a very good onboard menu. And as a result, I'm gonna give them both one point here because neither one or the other, Jet2 or TUI, were any better or worse than each other. The service is down to Lanzarote twice this year, back again, and then on TUI, down to uh, Pathos and back again. The service was excellent. No complaints there. Most importantly for us, both these airlines are operating direct from Glasgow to our destination, unlike British Airways, Virgin, KLM, Delta, etc., which means we've got to fly through London or Amsterdam. So the real benefit for us of flying on to your Jet 2 is the ability to get to our destination direct from our home airport, which is, of course, Glasgow. Those of you who followed Fiona and I on all of our trips this year are already going to know that I'm giving this category to TUI. In our opinion, Jet 2 have absolutely scrimped on the most rubbish quality thin seats they possibly can for their aircraft. Uh, and I do mean the 737-800s that we've flown on. We've no experience of the new A321neo aircraft that are slowly being delivered from this year going forward. So the seats on board the 737s with Jet2 that we've experienced uh, both this year and in previous trips, the seats are super thin, they're very lightweight, and as a result, they're extremely uncomfortable. And I can tell you guys, after a four and a half hour flight from Glasgow down to the Canary Islands, your backside is killing you. You've moved around, you've squirmed and you've squiggled for probably the entire flight. You can't say that for TUI because their seats were extremely comfortable on the 737 MAX that we flew on from Glasgow down to Pathos back in October. Of course, the TUI aircraft that we flew on this year between Scotland and Cyprus was a lot more modern than the 737-8 that we've experienced with Jet2. But it doesn't matter, guys, because at the end of the day, Jet2 have the ability to choose the seats that they want on board their aircraft, and they've chosen for weight over comfort. And as a result, I'm giving seat comfort. In this category, definitely 100% to TUI, not to mention that TUI's modern MAX aircraft have got USB charging and all of the great mod cons that you get in the 737 MAX. Hopefully Jet2 will be doing something as part of their fleet modernization as they move from Boeing over to Airbus. So in our conclusion guys, the scores actually weren't that far apart with uh, Jet 2 getting four points and TUI getting only three points. I think in reality, Jet 2 do offer a much more rounded service. They definitely operate a much larger fleet from Glasgow than TUI and therefore they connect Glasgow holidaymakers with sunshine destinations all over Europe much, much more than TUI do. And if Jet 2 would just fix the disingenuous boarding process, and replace those horrible thin space saver seats with something a little bit more comfortable. With the customer in mind, of course, they would have had a clean sweep. In this little contest between Jet2 and TUI, I say a little contest, guys. I know this is probably not my best video ever, but I do try. So that's it, guys, for our TUI versus Jet2 comparison here on Living the Dream. I know it's not been a very scientific look at both airlines, but it has simply been based on Fiona's and my experience, mainly this year, which is of course 2023. And as I said at the beginning of this video, this is probably going to be our last episode of 2023. Our big adventure for next summer, summer 2024, is still in planning stages. The flights, as I said, are booked and paid for. 
but um, you know, there might be something else coming up early in the new year. Maybe a return to the West, but a little bit more about that in a future episode. So thanks for watching guys, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified when the next video is published. And at this stage, I've no idea when that's gonna be.